Oh goody, it seems as though Scott Mendelson, senior contributor of Forbes.com, has once again written another garbage tier article. Box office prospects for Star Wars Episode 9 just got much brighter. Now we're going to go through uh, most of this article, I'm going to link it down below in the description, but, uh, Scott, buddy boy, oh, he's basically going to just say, oh yeah, so some movies were moved around, so now they have no competition. Well, let's see about that, buddy boy. Let's see. The biggest box office challenge to J.J. Abrams' trilogy caper was never the alleged online backlash to The Last Jedi, at least some of which was due to Russian bot accounts, nor was it the box office failure of Solo's Star Wars story, a film that fairly or not moviegoers just didn't want to see. Now, <coughs> Scotty boy, Scotty boy, let me tell you a little something here, buddy boy. Uh, no, no, no one liked The Last Jedi. Very few people did. Uh, the large majority of people didn't want it. But the thing is, Scott Mendelson is such a guy who is like, no. He is such, and he, he has blinders on, you know, like a horse. He's like, no, it's good. Everyone liked it. It was Russian bots. It was Russian bots. Even though there's no proof. It's Russian bots. Oh, yeah, and that fan backlash, even though it's obvious that there's a lot of people in it. No, 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 it's not true. There's not that many people in it. Oh, okay. Okay, so so the people are just... What's going on? Yeah, it just it's in a fantasy world. Scott Mendelson's over there smoking heroin and dope. He's over there... Oh, it's not real! Even though it's freaking obvious it's real. Whatever, Scott. Whatever. Think what you want, dude. Think what you want. But it's wrong. Go ahead, think think it's wrong because we know it's wrong but you know live your fantasy world you know i wish i could be a part of it i really do but uh, unfortunately you know the reality is something far different he continues but now just within the last month the ray kylo finale no longer has to worry about wonder woman 1984 james bond 25 or death on the nile so that's two potentially huge and leggy tent poles and one adult skewing biggie off the table. Oh, listen, Scotty. Listen, Scott. The finale between Ray and Kylo, <clears throat> I can go ahead and tell you how it ends. You, you want me to tell you how it ends? I'll tell you how it ends. Uh, Ray beats Kylo. Um, if you didn't know, that's what happened in The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi. <gasps> oh, and so, like, the third movie. So, shocker. Uh... I didn't, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was going to happen. How did, how did I know? Uh, because it's predictable as crap and a stupid story and terrible characterization and character buildup and story arcs. It's terrible. Scotty boy, terrible. Now the rest of this article, if you want to call it an article by Scotty boy Mendelson. It basically is him trying to make excuses and reasons why Star Wars Episode 9, Episode 9 is going to do so great. It's because now all these big movies that would have taken up the box office, they're, they're not going to be a part of the box office anymore. See? So it's going to make a lot of money. Look, The Phantom Menace has never stated that it's not going to get a lot of money. It's obviously going to make a lot of money. But... No movie in Star Wars history has divided the fan base like The Last Jedi has. Attack of the Clones, it was just cringy writing. And people wanted to go see Revenge of the Sith because of the fact that they wanted to see Anakin fall to the dark side and become Darth Vader. People came back for Empire Strikes Back because they were like, oh my god, Darth Vader is Luke's dad? Oh, we gotta know. What happens next? What does The Last Jedi do? It's... Well, let me guess. Finn beats, uh, you know, Chrome Dome again, which is what he did in The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. Oh, let me guess. Ray beats Kylo, which is what she did in The Force Awakens and The, the Last Jedi. Oh, and, well, Snoke's dead, so who, who cares about that? And she is, she's already trained. She has no flaws or weaknesses and nothing to really learn, so... Who cares? I'm not saying that it's not going to make a lot of money. E easily $900 million. But there's the possibility that it will make less than a billion. Which would be fantastic. And you get a message to Disney that we don't care about your corporate 
money-grabbing schemes. We want a good Star Wars movie with good Star Wars characters, themes, stories, people, and places. And maybe, just maybe, this underperforming Star Wars Episode Nine movie will allow the fans to be able to send a message to Disney that is, Hey, buddies, hire George back. We want him back. He's the only one that can really save Star Wars besides Cowboy Dave Filoni. Anyways, thank you for watching Matrix Force. Please subscribe, like, and comment below my, your thoughts for me to hear them. And uh, also check out the article. Please do that so you can see how <laughs> poor S little Scott Mendelssohn. Ah, how delusional, how delusional. <laughs>